Okay, so how is everyone today? Good? Okay, so we've, uh, we've met in the lab. Uh, we learned about uh, GitHub. A little bit anyway. We started up MATLAB. Uh, any questions about any of, of those items? We've turned in a few written homeworks. Any questions about those? Uh, 1A on this one? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we'll do that. Uh, <clears throat> in fact, I'll, I'll post a key. That's what I'll do so, so that we can just move on. Uh, I'll do that later this afternoon. Uh, so now I'm, now I'm recording. So I should be able to post this on the, besides the PDFs, I should be able to post it uh, on YouTube, so that's good. So any questions before we get to MATLAB stuff? Any questions? When you run your test, yeah. the actual character is going to be what's expected? No, that's what you have, and then expected is Right. What you're trying to obtain? Correct. So the way the way it will go is that we're going to write a bunch of different programs uh, as the semester <coughs> uh, progresses, and corresponding to each uh, programming exercise, there'll be a test function. Uh, well, th there'll be a test suite, and uh, what that <coughs> I think my tape's about to give way. <coughs> uh, for each exercise, there'll be a whole uh, a test suite, which means that I'll be, you'll be given a program, so shh, 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 shh. You'll be given a program that uh, runs your program and checks whether or not your program generates the correct output. And then when you run that test, it'll say for each one, it, it, if, if you have passed that test, it'll just print a little dot. So, uh, like, a, 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 a week or two from now, you'll know that your program is running correctly when you run the test function and it says, okay, I'm running the test, and it says dot, 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 test complete. So that, that's how you know it'll be right. I, I guess the confusion is that when I run my test at first, it gives me an, an actual, yeah. actual is, it says in MATLAB, it's spelled correctly, yeah. and then expected it's misspelled. Uh, th then you have an old you have an old version of the test. You need to on GitHub. You need to run sync. Okay, so this is different. Yeah. So come come ask me after class. I'll tell you what to do. So there's two main programs that we use. One of them is uh, GitHub. What does GitHub do? What 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 is the the purpose of GitHub? To organize files. So, shh, thank you. The purpose of GitHub is to organize files. Uh, because in the end, there's, there's hundreds of files that we're going to have to pass. If y'all need to continue, you need to exit. It's, it's extremely rude. Uh, the purpose of GitHub is to share files. I have to post a lot of files for you. You've got to make files and get them to me. That's a whole big coordination task. GitHub is what does that. And then the other main program that we use is uh, MATLAB. That's what you use to uh, run programs. Other questions? <clears throat> so today is the 18th. You have a question? Uh huh. Where the question was in like the like the function was x, question one or two, like x squared. Okay. I did. Did I make a typo on the exercise? It was okay. FW equals x squared. That's just a that's just a typo. Y'all gotta y'all gotta ding me when I sit, when I make it. You might get typo like that. You gotta say, hey, what are you doing? Yeah, F twenty three equals X squared. Well, okay. Okay. I no no dispute. I agree. Okay, fine. Uh, 
That's a, that was a typo. But but if if you e either way, if if you interpreted that W as an X, you, you'll get credit. If you interpreted that oh he's trying to be tricky, <laughs> then okay, that that'll be correct too. But but in fact that that was just a typo on my part. Sorry for the confusion. <laughs> Other questions? Okay. <clears throat> uh, okay. So <clears throat> last time, this is where we left off uh, last time. We had defined a function named ABSS. ABS. And uh, its signature is reels to reels it uh, it uh, takes a real input and produces a real output and it is defined by the following abs of X is piecewise defined as X uh, when X is less or equal to zero and negative x <laughs> thank you I must not have had enough coffee today yet greater than or equal to zero thank you and then uh, when x is less than zero in fact I'll just say otherwise right <laughs> because there's no other possibility. Okay, and it's slightly uh, strange that, <coughs> slight, slightly strange that I'm naming it ABSS. So can someone remind us why we're doing that? ABS is already defined. Right. So that, that's, the, that's the only reason uh, to do that. Uh, so uh, if this, uh, these individual, these individual uh, lines, what's the name of the individual lines? Clauses, clauses right? So uh, these are clauses. And then you uh, typically, it, when you're writing it in this way, uh, the clauses are numbered top to bottom, starting with one. So this is clause one. And this is clause two. So these individual uh, parts, uh, this part is called an expression. expression and uh, this other part the part that says whether or not you're going to use this clause is called the guard okay so each clause consists of an expression and a guard <coughs> the guard determines uh, whether or not you're going to enter into that expression. Uh, and uh, clauses, <clears throat> clause guards are evaluated top to bottom. And uh, it short circuits
to the first match. What that means is that if you, if you make a function that has multiple guards, say like five guards, it may be the case that the input satisfies, say, the second and the fourth guard. Uh, but you'll use the second clause because that's the first one that matched. Okay, so we'll do an example of that in a moment. Uh, but for now, uh, what we want to do is we want to write the uh, we want we, we want to write how this would look in MATLAB. So in the first place, what will be the name of the file that, w that corresponding to this function? ABSS.m. So here's the contents of ABSS.m. And that's a lowercase m. Uh, so what's the first word? Function. Function. And I'll take the... Um, when I'm writing, my, writing notes anyway, I'll take the uh, convention that every time I write a keyword, I'll write it in red. So how many output arguments does ABSS have? One. One. What do you want to call it? K. K. So you write K and then equal and then you write uh, the function name ABSS and then open parentheses and now how many input arguments does it have? Just one. What do you want to call it? X. X, okay. That's probably good so that it's in agreement with that one. Okay, so then now, uh, now that we've written the signature line, so that's the, the name of this. Now we start writing the function body. <clears throat> so, uh, well, this is sort of standard math notation here. Uh, there's two clauses. What is the corresponding syntax that's going to be necessary in MATLAB? We said it at the last moment last time. The if stuff, right? Okay, so because we're going to be inside of the function body, uh, that means that we need to make one indentation. To, to, to visually signify that we're inside of the function body. So how, what, what, what is an indentation in a MATLAB file? Spaces. Four spaces. Okay, so then if, is a, is a MATLAB keyword. So that's, that's, in, that's indicating that we're making an if statement. And that, that also means that it is, uh, well, like for example, here we have a variable named x and here we have a, uh, uh, this is an input variable, right? And this is an output variable named k. It's not permissible for you to name a variable if. That's just, that, that's, a, that's an error. So, uh, fine. If the input is greater than or equal to zero. So if x, and then if, if you look carefully at your keyboard, uh, you'll see that you have a greater than uh, key. It's like shift right ring finger, lower, right? Uh, you also have an equal key, but you can look carefully, there's not a greater, there's not a greater or equal key. Okay, so then you have to have a way to write that in MATLAB, and you just write them one after another. You first write the greater than character and then the equal character. If x greater or equal to zero, <coughs> we'll do one thing. And then the way that you the way that you write otherwise in MATLAB is what else? Uh, then <clears throat> to signify that that we're finished with the if statement, what do we write? End. End. 
and we're, I'm going to write stuff inside of here in, in a moment. Uh, but now, since, since I have the red pen in my hand, what other, what, what other keyword is yet to be written? End? I thought I just wrote end. Ah, end the function. So do I write it right here? No. Why not? Right, it's got to be lined up. It has to be at the same indentation level as the function. So about right here. <clears throat> so can you see that uh, this function is, the definition of this function is ended here, and the definition of this if is ended here. <clears throat> okay, so then... So suppose that uh, this condition is true, uh, that x is greater or equal to zero, uh, greater or equal to zero, uh, what do we need to write? K equal x. And now, because we're inside of the if, what do we need to do? We need to make an indentation. And what's, what's an indentation? Four spaces. So we indent four spaces. So that's one, two, three, four. So right there. K equal what? X. X. And then what else? Semicolon, right? <clears throat> Semicolon. Uh, and then what else do we need to do to finish up the definition? Very good. <coughs> else K equal negative x, semicolon. So now, generally speaking, uh, so right now we know basically uh, two of these kinds of things where you have to indent. Okay, so then we, you have to indent when you're inside of a function. You have to indent when you're inside of an if. Okay, and you should, and uh, it, it may come to pass that sometimes uh, when you are writing a function you need an if and then furthermore you need an if within an if. So that means you'd have to have indentations within indentations within indentations, right? So uh, the, the name for all of these is that uh, this is a block That's everything that is in between function and end, and because it's a because it's a function, it's called a, a function block. Okay, and then this is a block. Everything between the if and the else. So this is a block, etc. So any questions about the definition of how this works? Any question about it? OK. Uh, so uh, on, on the first lecture, we talked about uh, the increment, decrement, and add functions, right? And then one of them, uh, w c concerning increment and decrement, uh, one of them had a slight uh, caveat. So one of them was slightly weird. The, the signature was just slightly unexpected until you think about it. Which one was that? I think, I think this exercise, one, one of them is about that. Or the last one we turned in. Decrement has this, just a slight, uh, a slight issue uh, with its with its domain when what was it and why? R right. So, so uh, the domain of the decrement function is uh, positive naturals. Positive naturals, uh, and why is that? Right. Right. So, uh, well. Uh, 
Uh, so this is a remark about domain issues. So to remind you, uh, the definition of decrement is that decrement is a function from the positive naturals to the naturals. Uh, <clears throat> and it is defined by the decrement of uh, M is what? M minus one. So let, let's see. Um, how could we write this in MATLAB? So in the first place, what would, what would need to be the name of the file? Deck.m. So now I'll just go through this very quickly because this is not the interesting part. So it would, we'd need to write something like function Give a nice name to the, to the output. So I'm gonna I'm gonna name the output. Um, I don't I don't know. Uh, a A. Just just so you know that <laughs> you don't have to you don't think that variables need to have one one letter as their name. This is not necessary. Uh, so I'll name the output A A because why not? Uh, decrement D E C of M, and then to, to do it, I'll make one indentation and write AA is equal to M minus one, semicolon, end. Okay, so nothing, nothing surprising here, I think, except I use that weird name AA. Okay, so um, at, uh, at the MATLAB uh, command, what do, they, what do they call it? Command console? I think that that's what they call it. That's uh, below the text file that you can edit, and you see this, uh, this symbol right here. You can type stuff in there uh, and use it like a calculator. So you could, if, if, you, if you wished, you could write something like uh, 2370 plus 5, and then press, uh, then press return. So the way I'll signify a return is uh, like this. That's the enter key. So if you do that at the MATLAB prompt, MATLAB will say, oh, you want me to do that? OK, great, I'll do that. Uh, and MATLAB will respond with uh, ANS equal. And then usually depends on which exactly version of MATLAB you have. It makes that computation and then writes it some like down here ish, twenty three seventy. And then it comes back to right here, waiting, waiting eagerly for you to type something more. So ANS just means the, it, the, I suppose the reason why it says that is that those are the first three letters of answer. Okay, so uh, if, if, if you now had, had, uh, had typed the contents of that deck.m file and you now wrote uh, deck uh, of 2018, Then how would MATLAB respond? Very good. It would say ANS equal 
2017. No surprises, I suspect. Okay, what if we were to do the following? What if we said, uh, what if we said, oh, uh -huh, didn't hit return, right? Gotta hit return. Return. Uh, if we were to now write the following, uh, how about uh, z is equal to, uh, I don't know, 23 plus 70. Yes? <laughs> Thank you. Somehow, somehow the, the details are getting muddled in my brain. Yes, of course, that, of course, 2370 plus 5 is 2375. Okay, so now suppose that uh, suppose that we uh, write the following. And, and, and press return. How will MATLAB respond now? Uh, it will not. Yeah, it'll say, oh, not only do you want me to compute 2370, I'm so excited about doing that, but you want me to record uh, that value in the name Z. Okay, I'll do it. And it re will respond with Z equal and then uh, 93. It, it would. It would. It, it, yes, it, it would, yes. <clears throat> okay. Now, suppose that you were here, and you, and you said, okay, MATLAB, uh, now do Z plus 100. How will MATLAB respond? It'll say A and S, right? Equal 193. <clears throat> so any question about what's happened so far? Any questions about this? Okay. What if we were to continue this uh, emulating MATLAB with pencil and paper task here. Uh, and if, in, if instead we were to write, say, uh, W plus 100. It would be an error. And I can't remember the exact language that MATLAB would use, but it would, would respond with something like, unknown uh, name W. I don't know what W is, is what MATLAB is saying. Okay, <clears throat> so now that you kind of have an idea of what MATLAB's going to do at the command console, uh, well, it, when we typed DEC 2018, MATLAB responded with ANS equal 2017. Uh, now, here's the thing. Um, so, on a, on a math exercise, that is to say, not MATLAB, but like a, 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 a math exercise. Uh, if I if if I were to say evaluate the following, uh, deck of three one five deck of uh, 
103 and deck of 0, then what's the correct response in each case? So what's the correct response for the first request? 314, right? What's the correct response for the second one? 102. And what's the correct response for the last one? This is undefined. It's undefined because remember, uh, the domain of the decrement function is positive naturals. So in particular, it's not defined for zero. Okay, furthermore, furthermore, if we were to type dec of, say, uh, 3.2, how about that? It's positive, though. Okay, it's not a natural. So th this is the correct response. So now this is what this is what we're focusing on. Okay, this part. We've got to figure out how to get MATLAB to be like this. So back to MATLAB. Uh, if we take this function as it's written, so this one, as it's written, and currently we write dec of zero, then uh, what will happen? What will MATLAB say? Error. It'll say ANS equals negative 1. Why will it do that? Yeah, because MATLAB doesn't care. It doesn't care about your thoughts and, and hopes and dreams. Yeah, you haven't said anything about you haven't said anything about that you expect uh, M to be a positive natural. Right? The only thing that you told MATLAB is that every time I give you a number uh, as an input, I want you to subtract one and make that the output. That's all that you've told MATLAB. Okay, and furthermore, <clears throat> furthermore, as it's presently as the deck function is presently written, if you were to write dec of 3.2, how would MATLAB respond? 2.2. So this, again, is both the strength and the weakness of the machine. The machine is going to do exactly what you tell it to do. And it emphatically will not do what you intend to do. <laughs> Unless unless you have exactly typed your intentions. Okay, so the fact that we haven't said anything about wanting the input to be a positive natural means that MATLAB just doesn't care if it's not. So now we need to, now we need to come up with a way to make MATLAB complain loudly, just like we complained loudly when the request was for an evaluation at a point that's not in the domain. Okay? So uh, to get this right, <coughs> So we want uh, we want MATLAB to complain. about the domain.
for these. But it currently is not. <clears throat> okay. So the way uh, the way you uh, take care of that is that MATLAB. As a function, it's not really a function. Uh, really, it's more correct to call it a procedure. It has a procedure. The distinction being that a function produces output, whereas a procedure doesn't produce any output. It has a procedure uh, named error. <clears throat> uh, which we can use to make MATLAB complain. Okay, so let's see how to use it. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a new, we're going to edit this file, make a new implementation of, uh, of this. So here's uh, new contents. of deck.m. So the signature line is unchanged. <coughs> Function AA equal, no, not AA. Did I call it AA? Yes. I know. Deck of M. Okay, so uh, since, since we're just going to make one small edit. It's not going to fix all things, but we're going to try and fix one specific thing. Uh, let's complain. Let's figure out how to complain uh, if if the input is less or equal to zero. Okay, so if it, if the if for example if, if the input is negative three, that's just not going to work. If it's negative 33, that's not going to work. But even if it's zero, that's not going to work. So let's complain. Let's figure out how to complain if the input is negative. OK. <clears throat> uh, if the input is negative, L uh, in fact, less or equal to zero. So how do we write that? If. What's the name of the input? M. And then what do we have to write? Less than sign? Like that? Oh, OK, then equal sign, yeah. Because in, in the exact same way, you can, you can carefully get out your keyboard and eyeball every key. There's not a less or equal key. So to get MATLAB to do it, you have to type one than the other. If M less or equal 0. Okay. Well, this is this is uh, this is a problem, and we want to complain about it now. Uh, all right. So if m is less or equal to zero, then we'll say uh, one, two, three, four that this is an error. So error. And now error is a procedure. It takes 
for, for, well, it takes a, a multitude of input arguments, but we're just going to use two of them for now. So error, uh, and we're going to say, uh, so this is a uh, tick mark, so the, uh, a single quote. Uh, it is near the double quote mark over by your right pinky. So that's a, a single quote. And now we're going to write DEC <coughs> to indicate that we're in the deck function. And then, a, and then a colon. And now uh, we're going to type something uh, without any without any spaces or punctuation, just just letters or underscores. Uh, that signifies that uh, you know that, that says something like we want the answer to be uh, we want the input to be positive. So I'll just write uh, positive. Positive. <coughs> And then another single quote. So this is you writing your own interface? Yeah. And now a comma. So this thing that we wrote right here, uh, between two single quotes, this is referred to as a character string. Not in this particular one, no. Is but there I'll, I'll, a personal way to word it, or do you first state what is desired rather than what's incorrect? In my mind, I would rather see deck colon negative. Okay, so th there's a couple. Th there's a couple things there. Uh, there's two. There's two separate questions there. So uh, w w one answer to the question is is that when when I make a programming exercise for you, I'll specifically state that um, the program needs to generate the following uh, input and also, uh, sorry, the, 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 the program needs to generate the following kind of output and furthermore, uh, it needs to generate the following errors. So in that sense, you can just, you can just view it like, oh well, the instructor has commanded that the errors take these names. Okay. But then it's quite likely that you'll write programs not in Math 2370. In, in such a case, take, take your own style. Uh, but the, um, the, the, require, the required MATLAB style is that this, is, this first one is the function name. So function name, and then a colon, and then uh, some some phrase, <coughs> phrase uh, without uh, white space, without spaces in it. Uh, in it, and this this whole first thing, this whole first thing is used by the machine. Now the next argument to error is what you want to print for the human to read, for 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 a human being to read. Okay, well, what do we want to, what do we want to say to the human who? Who offended us with a with a non-positive input? Please enter a positive input. 
Right. Okay. Please. Uh, please. Please input a positive. <laughs> well, typ typically you don't say please. <laughs> I'll just say it like this. Input, input, in inputs must be positive. It's a closing, closing tick mark, closing parentheses, and then a semicolon. Yeah, I put a period. I wrote, I wrote a sentence, and then there's a tick mark. Okay. So now, to complete the if statement, what's required? End. End. Okay, uh, now we need to uh, write the definition of the output. So what do we need to write? Right, AA, and then what? Equal M minus one, and then a semicolon. And then what? End, right? Because we're, we have to end the function. Okay, nice. So uh, now at the MATLAB command console, If, uh, if we now type uh, deck of, say, uh, 23 and hit return, what will happen? <coughs> right, it'll say, it'll say ANS equal 22. Okay, so that, that's, that's working. Great. Uh, also, if we say uh, deck of zero, what will happen? Yeah, MATLAB will respond with input, inputs must be positive. Uh, inputs must be positive. So this is sort of matlab ease, MATLAB language for the corresponding thing. If I were to ask you to do, to evaluate these, on a math exercise, you'd say, oh, well, that one's 314, and that one's 102, and then the correct response to this one is that's undefined. This is like MATLAB saying, no, nope, I'm just, I'm not going to do it. Uh, however, as the function is currently written, as it's currently written, uh, if we were to uh, if we were to request Say, okay, MATLAB, then in, in such a case, how do you respond to deck of uh, 7.9? Right, it'll say ANS equal 6.9. So do you see that we fixed, we fixed one issue, but there's yet another to be fixed. Further, uh, furthermore, if we were to write the following, if we were to say, well, okay, MATLAB, what do you think about, uh, how about this, deck 
of, uh, how about the character string math 2370. So that is a tick mark and then you type the characters math space 2370 and then tick mark. So <laughs> what will MATLAB do now? <laughs> In fact, uh, what it would say, uh, I, don't know I don't know the exact language it would say, but let's look at what we're telling it to do. So, um, <clears throat> I'm not sure, it might generate an error here, I'm not sure. Because you're asking, is the character string math 2370 less or equal to zero? I think MATLAB will construe that as false. But it might generate, MATLAB might generate an error here. But supposing that it doesn't, supposing we get past this, and then we say, okay, compute, compute, uh, take the character string, and then subtract one. Now you can't do that. That would be like me saying, okay, well, I want you to take five and subtract one, and you say four. And then I, and then I say, okay, well, now take a giraffe and subtract one. And then you should, you should respond by something like, uh, no, I'm not really sure what, what that would mean, <laughs> to subtract one from a giraffe. So MATLAB's going to say something that makes about as much sense. It'll say something like, uh, operation subtract not defined for uh, string so you, you just can't do that okay well mm, let's fix the character string issue let's make it to where uh, if someone if someone were to type this, then, then we would complain with a sensible response instead of this sort of cryptic response. Okay. <clears throat> so, uh, to deal with this, kind of issue. Uh, MATLAB has a function uh, called is numeric. So that's the first, that's is like the word is, and then the word numeric all together. So is numeric. <clears throat> That's an I. Okay, so specifically, uh, at, the, uh, at the MATLAB console, if we type is numeric and we give it the argument say 2370 well in essence what you're asking is you're saying MATLAB is is 2370 a numeric value and MATLAB is going to say yes it is so the way that MATLAB says yes, when you ask MATLAB a yes or no question, when MATLAB is answering in the affirmative, it will say ANS equal and then one. So this one means yes. OK, 
Okay, how would MATLAB respond to the following? <coughs> Is numeric of this argument It's going to say no. But wait a minute, I thought, we, I thought we just established that when you plug in 2370, it says yes. <laughs> ah, the tick marks mean that, that that's a character string, right? So that's, that's the character string 2370. That's not a numeric value. So now MATLAB's going to say no. The answer is no. And when, when you're asking MATLAB a yes or no question, and the answer is no, then how does MATLAB signify no with a zero? OK, so now. We need to have a slight caveat here. So <clears throat> really, uh, the proper, the uh, uh, better, better names for yes and no are true and false, OK? And uh, furthermore, the convention in MATLAB and many, but not all, programming languages is that 0 is false. and non-zero uh, is true. Uh, that is to say <laughs> that it, if, if, you're pu if you're putting a yes-no question to MATLAB, uh, then, and, and MATLAB is going, going to interpret your input as yes or no. If you give it a seven, then how does, how's it going to interpret that? True. True. <laughs> how about 77? True. How about negative seven? True, right? As far as MATLAB is concerned, uh, zero is false, and anything that's not zero is not false, is true. Okay, <clears throat> that being the case now, uh, that being the case, let's make a new version of deck.m that uh, checks to make sure that the input is uh, both. Um, the first requirement, what was it? Positive, uh, well, yeah, po positive. And then now also needs to be numeric. So we want both of those things to be true. Okay, so now let's consider. Uh, the, uh, we're we're going to make two checks on the input. We uh, we want the input to be positive, and <clears throat> furthermore, we want the input to be numeric. Which one should we check first? Numeric, numeric I think. I think it more, makes more sense to check if it's numeric first. Why? Right. There's no sense. There's no sense in checking if something is positive if you haven't, in the first place, established that it's numeric. Right. Right. You might say something like, "Oh, it's. I. I really love red ap red apples. They're my favorite kinds of apples to eat. So I'm going to go ahead and eat this because it's red. Right. That means it's good to eat." No, what's the problem? I didn't, in the first place, check that it was an apple. OK, good. So uh, let's make new contents. <clears throat> of deck.m. 
So the signature line is, is still unchanged, function. A, A equal deck of M. OK, so now uh, we need to make two checks. So we'll check the numeric thing first. So what do I need to write? If. And then what? Now, we, what we're really concerned is if it is not numeric. Right? That, that's, that's when we want to complain. So uh, what we need is uh, the <coughs> MATLAB's uh, logical negation operator. So if and then tilde. So that's tilde. That's in the top left region of the keyboard. It's to the left of uh, <coughs> one on the top row. If not is numeric. of M. So again, this is not, this green stuff that I'm writing is not code, it's, I'm explaining. Uh, tilde <coughs> is logical negation. And if you were to read, if you were, were to read this out loud, sort of in English, uh, you would you would pronounce it something like this: uh, If M is not numeric, <coughs> yes. Uh, it will, but it's bad style. Not yeah. Got it. <clears throat> so if is numeric, uh, if if not is numeric uh, of m, then what should we do? Error. Right. We should make an error. So error. Uh, e r r o r. And then now we need to give error its two arguments. So what do you want to call the, well, we have to make a character stream. And remember that this first thing is for the machine. So it has to be something, colon, other something. So what's the first something? The function name, so deck, and then colon. And now we need to give something, you know, just something to make it different than the, than the other error. What do you want to call it? Numeric. OK, that sounds great. Uh, numeric. That's more of a name, not really a reason. Correct. This is just like a bookkeeping thing. Like you might think of it like, you know, error number 47.8, part B, or whatever. This is just some bookkeeping name. Uh, then what do you want to, um, what, <laughs> how, how do you want to uh, chastise the human being? Okay. How about input must be numeric? Okay. So now uh, assuming we were to go on and successfully write the rest of this function, we will, but assuming the rest of it was there and it was correct, then from now on, if someone were to evaluate deck with the character string giraffe, it would say input must be numeric. Okay. Uh, now, we, what's the next thing we want to check? 
we want to check and see if it's positive. So now, uh, we, uh, the, the way, we, one way we could do this is we could say end and end this if, and then we could start a whole other if. Okay, but that's bad style. So the way to continue an if is now there's a new keyword. So now I'm about to write a keyword, in this class anyway, for the, for the first time. So the keyword is else if, which it, and that's all one word. Else if. Uh, and what's the condition we're going to check? If m less or equal 0, then now we can just copy that line from the page ago or whatever that was. Uh, else, uh, so error. Deck positive uh, input must be positive. Okay, now for at least <clears throat> for at least this version of the file, uh, that's all the checks we're going to make. So what do we need to do? End end what? The if right. So it lines up with these. So end. Now what? End the function. Right. We've got to define the output. Okay, so then AA equal M minus one semicolon. So the error will end the function completely, not proceed at all past the error message? Right. A execution immediately stops and goes, uh, prints the error message and goes back to the console. Yeah. That's a slight simplification of what actually occurs. But effectively, that's what occurs. Uh, OK, good. So now, uh, what's, what's, the, what's one problem that is yet to be handled? Uh, Needs to be an integer, right? Needs to be an integer. So right now, uh, it, would, it would properly complain if the input were negative. It would properly complain if the input were not numeric. But if we plugged in 11.8, it would respond with 10.8. And we want it to complain. Complain. OK. So finally, to get that part right, I'm going to have to hurry because we have four and a half minutes. Uh, so in. Uh, in math, there is a function that is defined in the following way. It's defined as kind of a square bracket that's, and the left side is sort of doubled. Uh, well, the, the vertical bit is doubled. So that's like a square bracket, but it's the, the vertical parts are doubled. It is from uh, the reals to the integers. And this is called uh, the greatest integer function. It is defined as the greatest integer function evaluated at x is the maximum 
of the set of all uh, n in z uh, such that n is less or equal to x. For those of you who have done any programming, this has a different name. Mathematicians call it the greatest integer function, but computer science calls it what? Ceiling. Ceiling. Uh, so in computer <coughs> science, it's denoted, it, it's denoted Uh, with square brackets, but they, it, they only have the, the top feet. They only have the hats. They're not wearing any shoes. Uh, denoted this way, and it is called the ceiling. Ceiling. So, for example, what's the ceiling of uh, 3.9? Oh, wait. Sorry, this is not ceiling. Maximum, blah, blah. No, this one is. Ah, sorry. The greatest integer function is floor because it's the one less or equal. It's the one wearing shoes but no hats. So what's the floor of 3.9? Three. Three. Et cetera. Uh, but the notable thing is that what is the floor of 5? Five. 5. So given a real input, how do you tell when a real is an integer? If, if it's equal to its own floor, right? So, we don't have time to write it all out, but what I want you to do is I want you to uh, edit, <laughs> scare quote, edit, uh, deck.m one more time, using MATLAB's floor function uh, to check that the input is an integer. Okay, because you can detect if m is an integer exactly when m is equal to its own floor. Okay, so have a nice uh, Thursday. <laughs>